Welcome back to the Nutrimed Report and, of course, uh, Clay and Iron Show. We're going to have on the first hour Avi Lipkin all the way in Israel. Avi, of course, is a uh, amazing source of all kinds of information, remarkable author. Coming up in hour three, we're going to have Dr. Robin Bernholtz. Dr. Bernholtz is an MD, one of the senior members of the Academy of Environmental Medicine and one of the primary activists involved with the Academy position paper and statement by the Academy endorsed by the board that they want an immediate uh, immediate moratorium on smart meters on water, electricity, and gas, and, of course, the toxic dangers we're going to deal with. I'll be on the third hour of Rents tonight as a guest this evening. Coming up tomorrow, we have Harley Schlanger and Larry Pratt on Gun Resort of America will be on. Tomorrow, coming up on Thursday, I will be um, away Thursday and Friday, but we'll be doing a live show on Friday from Portland, Oregon, on our uh, live, uh, if you want to call it, uh, Firing line with Michelle. That show will be hour one on Friday, so do get your questions in. The hour one will be live with Jerry McLaughlin, a special guest. He'll be hosting the author Nina Guest of uh, Don't Disappear. Her second book is now out. And of course, uh, we will have also live broadcasting in hour three on Thursday with Tim Alexander and Chris Harris, our nuclear expert, because the evidence we have now is that the cooling pool number four in Japan at the Fukushima Daiichi reactor site. They have not replaced two high-speed pumps. The reactor cooling pool is now being drained of water. Uh, it's getting hotter and hotter, and it's going to blow sometime in the next few weeks. We know that a massive radiation cloud will cause what's called sky shine, or radiation cloud that will kill anybody in the re- immediate area, or make it incredibly dangerous to get even within some distance. They're preparing on the ground in Tokyo for a mass evacuation, and they've already offered in the open media Kyoto is an alternative capital to Tokyo. It's the largest metropolitan area on the planet in one single economic zone and one of the largest economies on Earth. So the second largest creditor nation on Earth behind China is Japan, and I expect that along with the 0% German bond rating, which was announced last week, along with the Fitch downgrading of Spain to triple B, which is two uh, uh, marks above junk bond, that the Europeans are toast and it's only going to require the Fukushima straw to break the European camel's back. That will, with five leveraged U.S. banks, highly leveraged, we will almost certainly have a bank holiday by the early fall. It won't be long. It'll be painful, but it won't be long. But I expect to see a devaluation of the U.S. currency. So uh, that's what's happening. And uh, um, we have uh, Avi Lipkin from Israel. Avi, welcome back to the program. Hi, good afternoon. So, Avi, uh, let's tell us, bring us up to date as to what's going on. You've done some recent books, and you also have a lot of issues to discuss today. Tell us the key uh, books you're talking about and your website address, and then let's get into some of the key issues that are burning right now in terms of what's happening in Israel, what's happening in America, how it's tied to the elections, etc. Okay, well, firstly, uh, yes, thank you. I have written uh, six books. And I have a website, VicMord, V-I-C-M-O-R-D, dot com. And the books and the CDs and the DVDs are all there. Um, the message uh, is a very um, unusual message because what I do is I connect the dots uh, between what uh, people know as the threat of Islam uh, together with uh, the one world government plans for you know global domination or shall I say one world order order. Um, and uh, Israel and the United States and uh, what's going to happen to the Christians in America and Christianity in the world and uh, uh, how Islam is planning to conquer the world together with the banks and the corporations that back Islam because they work with Islam. Uh, Anyway, so um, uh, and my most recent book basically discusses uh, the return to Mecca. It's called Return to Mecca, and it talks about um, the Bible roots of uh, the Exodus that the Israelites were in Arabia, and God's uh, commandment in Deuteronomy 11 is that the uh, the promises of the borders will be from the Mediterranean to the Euphrates and from Lebanon to the desert. And I define the desert as being Arabia. And uh, you've heard, of course, of the Arab Spring, which is a very new phenomenon, and uh, the Arab Spring will reach Arabia. And when the Arab Spring reaches Arabia, the kingdom will collapse, uh, the Al-Qaeda people who are Saudis, but they hate the Saudi king because he's considered a traitor for doing business with the West, um, these Al-Qaeda people are going to say, hey, to destroy Christianity, we've got to destroy the economy of Christianity. We have to destroy the world economy. We have to blow up the oil wells. And that's when the one world government people will say enough is enough and suppress Islam. But at this right. stage, Islam is winning. 
the American government, uh, most governments in the world are pro-Islamic because of the money, the vast money and oil power that these people have. And, yeah, dynastic uh, wealth. I talked to one gentleman some years ago that actually uh, was a, a senior guard in, in uh, Westminster, north of uh, London, and this uh, this facility had long buildings about a quarter mile uh, long, dozens of them, stacked to the ceiling uh, 60 to 90 feet high with pallets of gold bullion and, and literally U.S. currency. I mean, people don't understand the amounts of hundreds of trillions of dollars stored by the, you know, in, in off-site, away from Saudi Arabia, by these kingdoms. I mean, the tallest yeah. building is a Burj Dubai Towers, in, uh, uh, and the amount of wealth is just dynastic, and people just don't, don't understand it. They don't really realize, and there's no need for it at all. In fact, the now proven oil reserves in America, the proven oil reserves in Israel. I, I know I traveled to Israel, I think we talked about this before, with... Uh, uh, FICO, the senior oil engineer from the Israeli oil company in 1999, we actually visited the Macondo drill site for Hayseed Stevens, and the biblical records show that there were oil tar pits at the southwest end of the Dead Sea. Well, the amount of oil reserves at deep oil, abiotic oil, 30 to 40,000 feet down at the southwest end of the Dead Sea are greater than the entire proven reserves in the Middle East by many times. So there's all of this stuff about pouring wealth into a crazy uh, religious geopolitical cult called Islam is very, very dangerous, not only for Europe, but for the whole world, and uh, it needs to stop. Yes, uh, the scenario, as I see it, is like this. Uh, you know that uh, the oil situation is, of course, uh, critical for the one world government, for the economy. Um, if you have uh, the, the world demand for oil spiking, then the production has to increase. But what we saw happening over the last 10, 12, 13 years was the price of oil went from $8 a barrel to $147 a barrel within a very, very short time. And, um, uh, for, for example, you know, the only, by 2008, when the world economy uh, began to collapse, the only country that was really increasing its oil production every year was Canada. And uh, one of the reasons for the 2003 invasion of Iraq was that Saddam Hussein had allowed, after 35 years of misrule, he had allowed his uh, oil uh, production to drop to nearly zero, and uh, Iraq's at the top of uh, a lake of oil, and uh, the, one of the plans was to overthrow Saddam Hussein uh, and then completely rebuild the entire oil infrastructure. And uh, Rumsfeld, former Secretary of Defense Rumsfeld, was uh, heavily criticized uh, for saying that the, war, the oil of Iraq would pay for the war, and uh, the Democrats were, were hounding him, and finally he resigned. Uh, but by 2008, the Iraqis uh, began to come online with their new oil production. And uh, so today, Canada and Iraq are, are basically the two countries that are constantly increasing their oil production. But right. countries like, for example, like Russia, Saudi, the Gulf, Venezuela, these countries were decreasing their oil production, hoping to reap more benefits for less oil. And the less oil there was, the, the, the higher the price but they nearly destroyed the one, the one world government economy. Uh, so now yeah, because the main, the main cost of, uh, of business was the cost of oil, which is going to food and transport and, and everything. Everything, everything, everything. Now, uh, the next stage uh, is Iran. Iran sits atop the top of lake of oil. But the problem is that the Ayatollah regime uh, does not want to provide the oil to the world uh, in order to destroy the, the world economy, to destroy Christianity. The way to destroy Christianity is to destroy the economy of Christianity. And what these people don't understand is if you destroy the econ one world government economy, uh, billions of people are going to die of starvation, sickness, and chaos. Uh, you're going to have riots. You're going to have a, a completely insane situation. So the, uh, as I understand it, and I'm, you know, I'm not a globalist, but I think I understand these globalists. They're saying, you know what, we will overthrow the Iranian regime to get to that oil. Yeah. Are we going for a break? We are indeed, yeah. Okay, this is, uh, in a sense, uh, all these wars are oil wars, aren't they? Yes. Back in a moment with Avi Lipkin, all the way from Israel. Back in a moment. VicMord.com, V I C M O R D.com.
Welcome back. Let's go through the analysis of what's going on in uh, the Middle East and what's happening in uh, Saudi Arabia and these other countries. Uh, these really are oil wars. In fact, the northern area of Iraq uh, has now been proven oil reserves that are eight times as much as Saudi Arabia, over five and a half to six trillion barrels already proven. There's probably more. Uh, the second largest gas producer in the world is Iran. Uh, and, of course, they don't have the production facilities, so they have to actually ship their oil to China to be uh, refined by the China Oil Company. Uh, what's going on now, of course, in Iraq is a lot of this oil is being sold and, and processed by Chinese oil refiners and, and shipped out of uh, ports. Uh, the Middle East is really being rearranged around the whole issue of oil, isn't it? Yes, and indeed, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always constantly uh, shocked. Uh, when I hear the news uh, talking about uh, the nuclear threat uh, of Iran, uh, the nuclear threat this, the nuclear threat that, and my contention is that's all a fig leaf. I think uh, so. I don't. I don't buy it at all. I think that uh, yeah. the real issue is economic. In fact, I think even the the, the threats back and forth, uh, even the situation in Syria, is uh, the globalists are in a sense uh, behind this idea of, of promulgating a. Sunni Shiite uh, conflict, so they can get greater control by balkanizing these different powers to get control of the oil. Yes, very correct. I, I would I take it one step further that uh, the the plan is not only to balkanize but ra actually to destroy uh, Shiite Islam uh, or to make Shiite Islam totally subservient to the Sunni Islam. In other words, give the Sunnis the absolute monopolistic power over the Islamic world. Anyway, so if you'll allow me, I will go into sure. continue where I was regarding Iran. So right. there are four reasons for the overthrow of the Iranian regime. And, of course, the one, one of them that we mentioned is the nuclear threat to Israel. Right. Uh, but the nuclear threat to Israel, the problem is not the Israeli Air Force bombing the heck out of their nuclear facilities, which can only delay it by a few months. The, 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 real, thing, the real need here is for an overthrow of the Ayatollah regime, um, and the, the imposition uh, of a democratic parliamentary system under the auspices of the United Nations, uh, which, of course, is exactly up the line for uh, thinking of President Obama, uh, because 50 percent of Iran is Shiite, uh, Persian, Farsi, uh, and 50 percent of Iran is minorities, because you've got Kurds, uh, you have Azeris, you have Baluchis, uh, these people are Sunnis. And you've got right. Arabs who are Shiites, but you know, in the south, in the southwest, but they are not Shiite Iranians. They are Arabs uh, in Khuzestan. So, anyways, the point I'm saying is that uh, um, we will be seeing the overthrow of the regime, uh, the imposition of a parliamentary democracy under the UN auspices. Iran, I believe, like in World War One, like in World War Two, Iran will be divided up into zones. You're going to have a Russian zone. You know, the Russians keep saying that, and sending helicopters and sending weapons, and that, that's fine. <laughs> In the end, is the Russians are going to turn uh, against the Shiites, uh, because the Russians are going to get a big slice of the pie. You know what? You can work with the Russians. You just have to give them a big slice of the pie. Exactly. Yeah, in other words, they just did, right now it's going on as horse trading. And so yeah. the issue about Iran and the verbiage in the local, in the national, international media is simply the external smoke from the fire going on underneath with the, uh, the horse trading and exchanges going on for what positions they take in this new world order, right? Right. Between and, Russia uh, and China. And, you know, everybody talks about Obama being a socialist. And, you know, we had another president called Theodore, uh, not Theodore Roosevelt, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who's a Democrat and a socialist, and he gave the Russians half of Europe. And, uh, of course, praise God, you know, the, 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 the European, uh, Eastern European people got, uh, little by little, got their democracy. Um, this is still a long way to go, but uh, communism was defeated in Europe, except in Belarus, but that, that's another story. But uh, anyway, so, the, um, so President Obama is also a socialist Democrat, and uh, he, he's probably going to say to the Russians, hey, listen, what's your price? You name your price, we'll pay you. You'll take whatever slice of the pie you want in Iran, but just be with us. And now the, the reason I'm saying this is because the moment the Russians come on board, uh, Iran collapses like a house of cards in three days. And, uh, you know, I think that the Iranian uh, Ayatollah leadership will probably be promised uh, political asylum. Their money is outside of the country anyway, probably in Moscow. So these people will be given asylum, and it, it's a happy ending for the Iranian people uh, under the auspices of the United Nations. Obama gets the credit. He's Messiah. Uh, so anyway, so we have here, we see right here uh, some very interesting reasons for war with Iran. 
Uh, the democracy business is not really important. The nuclear business with Israel is not very important. The two important uh, points here are oil and the schism between the Sunnis and the Shia. Yeah, so, that's right. Uh, In fact, that schism is a, is probably the most serious of all these issues because it's it's a very hot. They, they hate each other more than they hate Jews or Christians or anybody else. Very, very correct. And you know, I want to say something about the Shiites. Shiites are a very persecuted bunch of people. Uh, they've been massacred. You know, by the way, the Muslims have killed uh, 270 million Muslims, you know, in the last 1,400 years. Um, they've killed their own people. They're continuing right. to kill their own people. And uh, the Shiites are what I call poor, pure, and Puritan. And the, the Saudis, who are Sunnis, are, uh, enjoy this profligate spending. And they go off to drinking the, the debauchery and the harlotry in, in, in Europe, America, or even in Egypt. Actually, Egypt is going to sh- shut down very soon because the Muslim Brotherhood took over. But this, the, the Saudis are notorious for their orgies, and they have all this money. But the moment they get back to Saudi Arabia, they're the keepers of the holy places. You follow what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so the Shiites are saying, we see through all this hypocrisy. You know, forgive me for mentioning Jesus' name now, but, you know, Jesus was the kind of guy, he said, you know, I, I hate hypocrisy. You know, these Pharisees are pretending one thing and they're doing the other. And that's kind of what the Saudis are doing. They're pretending to be holy people, controllers of Mecca and Medina. And the Shiites are saying, nonsense, we're going to take Mecca and Medina, and we're going to chop off the heads of these Saudi kings and princes, and we're going to establish Shiite Islam as the true Islam. And so, and let me tell you, the Saudis take this very seriously, and rightfully so. And so I believe, I believe what we see here is a, um, a, a concoction here, a cocktail, of four very important reasons for the overthrow of the Ayatollah regime. Um, and... Uh, shifting over to Syria and Lebanon. Now we're we're seeing something interesting here. I I look at Iran kind of like an octopus. And uh, Syria is a tentacle. Uh, Lebanon is a tentacle. By the way, Iraq is a tentacle. You know, the American government said, you know, the Iraqi people should have democracy. Well, the Iraqi people are are primarily uh, Shiite. And in fact, a good majority of the population are Shiite and they're, in a sense, uh, sociologically and uh, religiously allied with Iran anyway. Yeah, you, you know what? You know what the Arabs say? Uh, I'm, 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 you know, I live in the Middle East. I'm telling you, the, the Sunni Arabs are saying these Americans are crazy. They had this crazy president, Jimmy Carter, who overthrew uh, the Shah of Iran, who was the best friend America could ever have in the Islamic world, and brought in Ayatollah Khomeini, who was the craziest guy you could ever bring in. And right. Jimmy Carter said about Ayatollah Khomeini, he's a saint. He's a wonderful man. He's a man of God. He's a unifier of the people. And this is the guy we need to replace the Shah of Iran. And after all, you know, Muslims serve the same God as the Christians. That's what Jimmy Carter said. That's and, crazy. you know, my contention is that Allah is Satan. So is Satan, is Satan God? Is God is Satan? No. So anyway, so uh, stupidity and ignorance of President uh, Jimmy Carter brought about the fall of America's greatest ally, Iran, in the Islamic world, and turned Iran into enemy number one. So how, what do the Arabs say? They say these Americans are stupid. And George W. Bush did exactly the same thing with Iraq by overthrowing a Sunni leader and bringing in a Shiite leader who has now created a second Shiite state, fanatic Shiite state, with 60% of Shiites, and they're allied with Iran. Exactly. Amazing. Very good analysis, uh, Avi. Back in just a moment. Welcome back to the Nutri Medical Report, and uh, we have a, a breaking news with Tim Alexander. Uh, let's start off uh, with uh, Tim, your report, and then we want to get obvious response. Okay. Um, according to the United States government and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, the Russians are deploying attack helicopters to Syria. Yeah, which may mean that not only that there's less, more likelihood of war, actually I think it's more likely that the Russians are totally fed up with the acceleration of what's going on and the likelihood of this getting completely out of control because what our government's doing is supporting Al-Qaeda, which is insane. These are literally camp, camp X-raying uh, graduates, literally they're Tunisian pirate murderers uh, that we've hired, and actually the king of Saudi Arabia has paid $50,000 a head for somebody to commit, go in and commit murder in Syria, and they have foreign troops foreign special forces inside Syria trying to bring down the Assad regime, which will try to convert it from an Alawite Shiite ally of Iran to a Sunni state, another vassal of Saudi Arabia and the West. This is very dangerous, very stupid, and it's going to make things a lot and, worse. And I only gave you one out of four stories. 
it, 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 it doesn't get better. Right. Um, so. Russia is preparing uh, airborne units uh, to intervene in Syria. Hel- attack uh, helicopters. Well, the 76th uh, Division of Airborne Forces, uh, this is one of the most experienced uh, units in the Russian Army, as well as the 15th Army Division and Spetsbaw Forces uh, from the Black Sea Fleet uh, have been undergoing intensive training and are prepared to um, to enter Syria. Additionally, uh, the Russians are preparing to... Uh, well, their, their, their bases uh, in Armenia have uh, been upgraded with the latest attack helicopters and assault helicopters. Uh, the wives of the officers have all been evacuated to Russia. Uh, they, they have been reinforced with paratroopers, and they're preparing. Uh, they have a large force near Georgia, and they're preparing to strike across Georgia to go through Georgia into Armenia. Uh, and then, of course, Armenia is, is friendly to them, and they will go into northwest Iran that way. Uh, one week ago, there was a meeting uh, of the Shanghai Cooperative Organization. Right, um, SEO. Beginning on the 6th and also on the 7th of June, uh, at that meeting, I believe that uh, it was determined that uh, China and Russia would uh, uh, commit their forces uh, in the event that Syria and Iran are attacked. Keep in mind that China can drive down through its client state, Pakistan. Pakistan, by the way, is in a near state of war with the United States over uh, the missile attacks and has enormous numbers of of, uh, tankers just backed up because it it has not allowed us to resupply uh, NATO forces in Afghanistan through Pakistan for about three months now. Uh, But Pakistan has threatened to use its nuclear weapons if Iran is attacked. Uh, the Chinese are capable of driving several hundred thousand troops through Pakistan into Iran. Uh, I expect to see, by the way, in the southern military district of Russia, all the fighter aircraft and helicopters have been replaced by the latest top of the line Zukovs and attack helicopters. Um, so it appears that uh, uh, both Chinese and, and Russian forces are prepared to enter uh, into the coming general Middle East war, which will become the Third World War in most likelihood. Uh, just out from, and this is the uh, another story, just out from uh, the commander of the Israeli home front, uh, Dan region, which is greater Tel Aviv, um, he says in case of a missile attack on the center of Israel, especially unconventional attacks, and if buildings are destroyed, the population from Tel Aviv and other cities will be evac- evacuated and relocated in other areas of the country. He didn't say where the roughly 2 million inhabitants of the Dan region's the core towns of Tel Aviv, etc., will be relocated. Uh, and the outer uh, ring includes another 3 million people. But... Uh, uh, they're they're basically talking about taking the people into the desert. Uh, by the way, 30 percent of the Israeli population under his uh, homeland command are short of gas masks. So they they only 70 percent of the Israeli population even have a have a gas mask, and gas masks only protect you from certain chemical uh, attacks. They don't protect you from skin absorbent. Uh, uh, more advanced chemical attacks. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Avi, what you do you die what do you, with your gas mask on? Exactly. But, uh, so, Avi, what do you think of this news? Uh, uh, we know that the uh, ante is being up. Uh, I personally think that this isn't. I don't think there's going to be a number of wars. I think this is more chess pieces because what we see going on is we see Fukushima is the primary playing card in this deck, and the reason is the second largest creditor nation is Japan, right behind China by hair. And it's about to crash and burn because this summer when the radiation is released, there will be a mass evacuation. The debt structure in Europe is teetering and cracking. You can hear the camel's back breaking. We know that five of the largest banks in America are leveraged for the debt. The Russians and Chinese have refused to buy all this bad toxic debt with the firing of Kudrev the, uh, by Medvedev before the elections with re-election for the third term of Vladimir Putin. 
the Russians and Chinese playing this card, I think, is not necessarily a step toward war. It's a step toward the outbreak of a toxic peace treaty, which I think is coming very quickly, because if this ever turned it into a, quote, regional war, this will become a thermonuclear conflict within a matter of weeks or, or, or days rather or than months or, or hours. And I don't think that it's something that they can control. Once things start flying, my guess is we're actually not going to have the outbreak of war, but peace. And uh, what I see coming is a toxic peace treaty that... Uh, is coming down the line. That's what I think is, is going to happen because this is far too dangerous, the game that they're playing right now, for this to not get way out of control. Okay, my turn? Yeah, yeah your turn. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you say? what do you say, Avi? Okay, well, first, what I want to do, you know, there's a very famous expression which I don't hear so much in America anymore. Remember, hold your horses? Yes. Uh, and I, I, I would I would like to say it's possible hold your horses. I, That's what I think, too. I think hold your horses. I don't think that there's going to be a big war. I think yeah. this is uh, playing cards for a new financial order that is being set up with Russia and China. As we mentioned on the break, Russia and China uh, want a new deal. China with the, uh, with the Asia group just last year, and Russians with their basically the single economy based on oil and manipulating the price to stay high. Uh, they want a new system, and uh, they, they feel excluded from the world economy. Okay, first let me say one thing. The Chinese um, are uh, uh, very, very ambitious. They're very, uh, how shall I say, imperialistic and, and expansionist. Uh, I think that they, uh, the Chinese have their eyes on Spratly Islands, uh, contested by Philippines and Vietnam as well. Um, um, uh, the Chinese, of course, would like to uh, take Singapore, which is a Chinese island. Uh, they want to take Taiwan. Uh, but I think the Chinese understand that without Walmart, they're sunk. And without Walmart, you know, forgive me for saying sometimes I think even Jimmy Carter yeah, and President exactly. Nixon were very smart when they made these uh, deals to open up uh, trade relations with China because, you know, the Chinese really have an anchor wrapped around their necks. And it is the American debt. It is the American economy. It is the world economy. And the Chinese are not uh, stupid, and they're not... Uh, I think the, the Chinese are famous for having patience. The Chinese are not going to go looking for a war. So I don't right. think the, the Chinese are going to send their uh, army across Pakistan to fight for Iran. Uh, by the way, I have to tell you something. Chinese also know their history. The Muslims hate their guts. And by the way, the, the Muslims hate the guts of the Russians, too. And the Russians, by the way, are the most racist people on the face of the earth. The, the Russians don't like the Iranians. Um, the Russians don't like anybody in the Islamic world. The, the Russians don't like any foreigners. They don't like blacks. They don't like anybody. Right. And they see America as their enemy number one. Now, the difference between Russia and China is that China is totally integrated in the one world economy. Uh, the Russians are not. The Russians live off in some other uh, universe. You know, the Russians, um, they, they sell their minerals and they buy some uh, expensive luxury goods from the West. But, the, you know, the Russians basically uh, exist on They're, their own. On they have a mono economy. The Chinese, though, are completely based on the market economy of slave labor and selling things in Walmart and Tesco and and uh, Target stores, and without I, the ability to... I, I don't to, see World War III so quickly. No, I don't either. I think we're going to have an outbreak of peace, though. These moves tell me peace is coming very quickly. Welcome uh, back. Uh, the interesting dialogue. Avi, tell us what you just mentioned. I want to, hear, want to hear from Tim because this is important to look at this dialogue to where we're going. Uh, and, uh, we, you know, people can listen and kind of make up their own conclusions, but I tend to think that we're heading toward an outbreak, not of war, but of peace. When we see these war, saber rattling that's, that's public, the saber rattling is for public consumption because there's a new deal between the West and the globalist bankers and Russia and China, and these. These are a different kind of proxy war. This is not a military war. It's not even just a war between Sunni and Shiite, which is being used as a leverage. What we're seeing here is something quite different. Avi, give us your perspective, and then we'll hear from Tim. Well, uh, like I said during the break, I think that uh, the Russians and the Chinese are going to be offered a humongous slice of the pie by Obama. And don't forget, you know, President uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt did exactly the same thing in World War II, where he gave the Russians half of, uh, half of Europe. Um, I think we're, uh, we're going to see a divi dividing up of Iran, uh, as happened in World War I, as happened in World War II, and uh, the, the, each zone will be given to a power. Maybe China will get a zone, too. And uh, w what the world wants is economic stability. There's an economic crisis. 
Uh, the economic crisis is not good for China either. And so I think there's a com- commonality of interests here in which uh, we will see, uh, I think we will see a controlled conflict, a controlled war, uh, a very short war uh, against Iran in which uh, the uh, Ayatollah leadership will probably be granted asylum in, in Russia. And uh, it'll be over in three days because if the yeah. Russians and the Chinese and the Americans and the, and the United Nations all march against Iran, it's like a house of cards. It's going to come down. And same with Syria. The problem with Syria and Lebanon is when it's taken over by the Arab Spring, when it's taken over by the Sunnis, uh, that's, that's complete insanity. And so we're going to see an Armageddon rise up later under the... Yeah, in other words, it'll be delayed for a future well, war okay. with right. Syria. Uh, so, Tim, okay. give, me, give me your announcement. I agree that, that, that there probably has been a, an agreement cut with uh, Russia and perhaps China. Well, China got a lot and of the Russia oil out of Iraq already. They got most the, of the, the Russians oil. have wanted a warm water port on the Persian Gulf since the, the days of almost Peter the Great, okay? And I think that's the bait that's been dangled in front of them. But all this is going to get out of hand. Remember, the mullahs have no intention of going anywhere, and the Awites, uh, headed by uh, 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 Assad, have no intention of be- becoming uh, cannon voter to uh, the the uh, uh, Shia or the Sunnis, and because they are a branch of the Shiites, they and remember, they bought the Soviet uh, Advanced Biological Warfare Program uh, about 21 years ago. And they had the capacity to uh, take a a mad, mutually assured destruction counterforce strike into Europe and into North America using terrorism, bioterrorism. Also keep in mind that the, the globalists almost certainly want a global war right now because of the economic chaos, which they have been, they've spent a lot of time, money, and effort to set it up. They use war to reorganize the world to benefit them. They did that with the Napoleonic Wars, the First World War, and the Second World War. They plan on doing that with the Third World War. All this is planned, but the problem with all these plans in 21st century warfare, not everybody will go along with it and it will get out of control. That's what I think. But time will tell, guys, but we are in very, very interesting times. And the ante just raised, got raised today. A lot, yeah. It's like being in a rail yard where the switchmen are down the line and you don't know if the train is going to be switched properly and go onto a different track or going to have a train crash. Well, having... You know, no one said that, that the, the Russian pilots will be flying these uh, attack helicopters, but you don't train attack helicopter crews overnight. And uh, particularly the, the new Russian at, uh, attack helicopters are very state-of-the-art. They use a, a twin uh, counter-rotating uh, main rotors in, instead of an anti-tark rotor. And uh, they're very good, but it requires about a year of training to train the gunner and about a year of training to train the pilot to operate that as an effective system. So what you're going to be seeing are Russian troops in combat in Syria any day. That's, that's anyway, kind of, I have to go. I just wanted to break in. And get yeah, that's important. That's important perspective because I think that uh, uh, something terrible is going to happen soon. Where there's, I think the underlying subtext though appears to be the economic thing tied to all these other issues. It's we are witnessing what I call the perfect cornucopia from hell, which is the economic, which is the the F- Fukushima induced first. Uh, Fukushima nightmare. Also, the British petroleum, uh, de- uh, the, the effect on the global climate. Uh, a variety of other things that are natural that's happening, as well as warfare. It's all part of a, a, a plan to bring about the new world order, to coalesce everything into a one world system of economic, political, financial control. Uh, this is an old game. They've been at it for over 200 years, and they're coming to their end game. Uh, as a Christian, I happen to think that it will be literally not the end game, but the end times, as prophesied by the yeah. Book of Revelation. But in any case, okay, I have to go. I just wanted to, to update you guys. Maybe we'll do an update after the uh, show's over on our live stream channel. Uh, I may not be here, but uh, if maybe. not, but put one up yourself. Then we'll we'll talk to you okay. later. Okay, take God care. bless. Okay, uh, so Avi. Bye-bye. 
Uh, when we take all these facts together, I tend to, to uh, look on this a little bit more from your perspective where the ante is being up. But there will be a future war with Syria. I don't. Th- I think the Syrian thing will be will literally be turned over, and the Assad regime will fall. We'll have a Sunni uh, situation there, which is actually in many ways more dangerous. Um, and I think it's going to to stay it for a period of time. I thought I think the war is going to be put off for some period of time for years down the road. But I don't think there's going to be a big uh, conflict with Iran. I just don't think this could happen. Uh, by the way, recommended reading for your listeners. Uh, even the atheist should read it because it's very, very good uh, reading. Is Tekken Chronicles chapter twenty? That the, the entire chapter talks about uh, three different armies. You're talking about which, uh, First Chronicles chapter twenty, said? Second Chronicles chapter twenty. Second Chronicles, okay. Second Chronicles twenty, yeah. And Jehoshaphat is the king of uh, Judah, and uh, these three armies uh, cannot be defeated. They're r- surrounding Jerusalem. Everybody's locked up under siege in Jerusalem. And right. they come to the high priest and they say, "What are we going to do?" And the high priest said, get on your faces before the Lord, and the Lord will show what he's going to do. And the next morning, after everybody prayed, you know, they opened the gates of the city and went out, and these three armies decimated each other. So it's kind of like the Shiites and the Sunnis uh, slaughtering each other. I mean, I, it breaks my heart that the, the Muslims kill each other because Muslims are human beings. And uh, I love the Muslims as human beings. Hey, if I go, I got over my hatred of the Germans. You know, I, I well, I think a lot of, you know. we have to also understand a lot of the people that are in uh, Palestine and these other countries were ancient uh, Hebrews genetically, but they were ancestors were put to the sword that they either converted to Islam or they were, right. deb- and so many of them are actually genetically ancient Hebrews. Yes, and that's uh, 85% what's of these uh, the pa- so-called Palestinians are actually uh, Jewish blood. And by the way, the Christians of Bethlehem and Nazareth, all these people were Jews 2,000 years ago. And right. they became believers. Anyway, so the, but the point I'm saying is that um, the war uh, between the Sunnis and the Shiites is so overpowering that uh, 1,400 years, I mean, the Catholics and Protestants were killing each other for 300 years and basically got over it. Uh, but the Sunnis and the Shiites have never gotten over it. They never will. And um, the, the war in Syria, and by extension Lebanon, is one in which I believe the Turks, you know, Hezbollah are 40,000, big deal. The Turkish army is 600,000. Uh, that's the Sunnis. And the Egyptians, they're ready to go fight also against the Shiites. And the Saudis, and, and all these. By the way, you know, I have to tell you something that's lurking in the background. You know, today, almost half of the conscripts in the Russian army are Muslim. That's what right, kind of and that's Muslim? a big deal. Yeah. What kind of Muslim? Sunnis. And so the, and, and the 200 million Muslims in the six former Soviet republics, they're Sunnis. And uh, so, you know, the, the, I mean, the Shiites are all concentrated right there in the Persian Gulf. But, uh, you know, I think the, 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 this, this religious hatred between the Sunnis and Shiites is so great that there is no way that Bashar al-Assad can remain in power. The Sunnis will win. And the State Department is behind them. So, oh, yeah. so, so very, very unfortunately, this will lead to even a worse enemy against Israel, which will be the, the Armageddon Sunnis. Right. I, in fact, I agree. I think the Armageddon Sunnis are what's coming down the road. It says the the uh, desert of the burden of the sea, which is the Red Sea, will be vaporized, and so will the city of Damascus. And even down the road, it'll be where they try to attack Israel, and Israel will annihilate them. I, don't know. I, I think of Israel as the 51st state. Most people think of Israel as a separate country. I think of America as Ephraim and Israel as like the two sticks of the two houses of Israel. And people don't understand that. They don't realize just how close our allies are and how even our economy is tied to the situation. Do they? Absolutely. And by the way, you know, Jesus is not a Muslim. He's a Jew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He was a Jew all the way. Yeah. No, and absolutely. Thank you, Avi. We'll have you back on soon. It made a remarkable perspective. Yeah, I think the outbreak of peace is coming quickly and the time of Jacob's trouble and the abomination that desolates very soon. 